Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Emily Waring. Emily got her bachelor's in chemistry from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, where she worked in the group of Professor Taylor Haynes on copper-catalyzed aerobic oxidation reactions. Currently, she's pursuing her PhD in the Schindler Lab at the University of Michigan. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Emily. Thank you very much for coming on to share your work. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this Research Spotlight episode. I'm very excited to talk about our recent work to access 1 and 2 azotines by visible light mediated 2 plus 2 cycloadditions using oxymes and alkynes. Four membered nitrogen heterocycles are very interesting functional groups that have desirable properties for drug discovery and pharmaceutical applications, including high ring strain, low lipophilicity, and increased conformational stability relative to larger ring sizes. Azetidines, fully saturated four-membered nitrogen heterocycles, have been gaining interest in recent years as potential bioisosteres for other larger N heterocycles, and efficient methods to access these products are required for further development of these applications. 2 plus 2 cycloadditions are arguably the most efficient method to access four-membered rings in terms of atom economy. The aza patinobuchi reaction is the light-mediated 2 plus 2 cycloaddition of imines and alkenes, wherein one reaction component is excited to its excited state, which can then undergo the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with the other starting material. However, historically this methodology has been limited by the challenge of imine isomerization, where imines in their excited state preferentially relax by isomerization rather than interacting productively with the alkene in a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. In the last five years, there have been huge advancements in this field using triplet energy transfer photocatalysis, resulting in new methods to synthesize a variety of different azetidine compounds through the aza paterno buchi reaction, which can be seen here. While these developments for azetidines are all very exciting, despite huge advances in that field, the exploration of azetines, four-membered nitrogen heterocycles with one unit of unsaturation, have been very limited. Azetines have the potential to be very interesting for biological and pharmaceutical applications, and are already known as important structures in the degradation of DNA through the formation of photolesions. Additionally, in one study, azetines have shown activity in the induction of apoptosis in a THP cell line. However, exploration of azetines as pharmaceutically relevant compounds is still limited, partially due to challenges in their synthesis. Methods to synthesize azetines are much more limited than those for azetidines, as you might imagine, the ring strain in these compounds makes them more difficult to form. Some traditional methods to make one azetines include beta elimination, azeridine expansion, and thermolysis. Two azetines can also be accessed through ring expansion and elimination. However, these methods require more complex starting materials or harsh conditions, which limits their general applicability. Similar to when we think about making azetidines, theoretically the most efficient approach to synthesizing azetines would be a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition between either a nitrile and an alkene or an imine and an alkyne. However, along with the previously discussed challenge of imine isomerization, these methods face the additional challenge of ring opening of the azetine products to the corresponding azadienes, which can be favored under 2 plus 2 conditions, as this allows for the release of ring strain. This has led to there being very few methods to form azetines by 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. Existing methods are limited to the photochemical induced reaction of conjugated nitriles, the only photochemical 2 plus 2 to access azetines, and methyl mediated cycloaddition of imines and alkynes, along with a Lewis acid catalyzed imine alkyne 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to form two azetines that was published recently in 2021. While these methods all offer great advances in this challenging area, they are still quite limited in scope and generality. When we considered how we might access these desirable structures through 2 plus 2 cycloaddition, we were inspired by our previous work on the aza paterno buchi reaction, which uses visible light and an iridium catalyst to form the product in exceptionally mild conditions, which we thought might be suitable for isolating these azotine products, which can be sensitive to further decomposition. I will also add here that if you are interested in learning more about this previous work, 
I invite you to watch Synthesis Workshop episode 35, where my co-worker Mark Becker talks about this reaction in detail. In this previous method, the triplet excited state of the isoxazoline starting material is accessed through triplet energy transfer from the photocatalyst. Before we move forward, I just want to go into this a little bit for people who may not have seen this mechanism before. So how this triplet energy transfer works is first the photocatalyst is excited by visible light and then undergoes inter-system crossing to access its triplet state. The triplet state of the photocatalyst can then interact with the substrate molecule, exchanging its electron in the SOMO for a ground state electron in the substrate's HOMO. This double electron transfer event results in the return of the catalyst to its ground state and the sensitization of the substrate to its triplet state from where it can undergo a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with the alkene. We hypothesized that we could access the desired 2-azotene product from the same isoxazoline starting material through 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with an alkyne rather than with an alkene. However, very interestingly, when we screened the first reaction using our previous conditions, we observed a rearranged 1-azotene product rather than the expected 2-azotene. This was really interesting and exciting to us, and we considered how this could be forming in our reaction conditions. Our initial hypothesis was that the reaction under these conditions was proceeding to form the expected two azotines. However, due to our choice of diphenylacetylene as the alkyne coupling partner, this two azotine intermediate would also have a low triplet energy due to the stilbene-like functionality of the alkene. This would allow a second triplet energy transfer step to occur, generating a triplet excited state which could rearrange in a stepwise fashion to the observed one azotine product. We also could not rule out the possibility that this intermediate 2-azotene could be excited by direct excitation and undergo a concerted rearrangement to access the same product. We were really excited by the formation of this 1-azotene product, and so we optimized the reaction for its formation, and we found that we could use phenylacetylene as our alkyne and still get the rearranged 1-azotene product due to the presence of a styrene in the theoretical 2-azotene intermediate. Optimization led us to identify the catalyst labeled as IR1 as our optimal catalyst. Though our highest NMR yield for this substrate was a moderate 56%, we were still happy with this given the paucity of methods to access azotines. Also, we had found that the remaining mass balance was mostly starting material, not decomposition, so these moderate yields were more likely due to just intrinsic reactivity for these specific substrates. Moving forward, we extended the scope of this transformation, starting with a variety of different alkynes. We found a drop in isolated yield due to challenges in isolation for some of these compounds, and we also found that the yield is quite dependent on the alkyne coupling partner, but we're still able to access a variety of these products in up to 86% isolated yield. We also found that steric interactions played a large role in the efficiency of the reaction, with the two internal alkynes with large alkyl groups resulting in the lowest yields. Really excitingly, we also found that this transformation tolerated non-aromatic alkynes, including both mono- and diester-substituted alkynes, which shows that this method is not only constrained to aryl alkynes, but can also be used with any alkyne that will allow the 2-azotene intermediate to be re-excited or resensitized to do the rearrangement. We found that electron withdrawing and donating aryl alkynes were tolerated, with electron withdrawing parafluorophenylacetylene being superior. Additionally, for this substrate and two others, we showed that an organic photocatalyst, 2CZPN, demonstrated increased yields for the transformation, highlighting the potential of utilizing a more cost-effective catalyst for future scale-up applications. Isoxazolines with varying substitution on the backbone were tolerated with an increase in yield for larger substituents, and finally, we were able to show that different electron withdrawing groups on the isoxazoline were well tolerated by this reaction, with the nitrile group performing exceptionally well, up to 96% yield, and even performing well with alkynes that had previously performed more poorly, such as phenylacetylene. We were really happy with the generality of this scope, especially relative to other methods to make one azotines. And we were curious if given our mechanistic hypothesis, we could also make two azotines if we used aliphatic alkynes that would not provide a sensitizable intermediate. When we subjected aliphatic alkynes to our optimal conditions, we found that we were able to access a variety of two azotines and up to 58% yield. 
We found that terminal archaeans performed better for this transformation, likely due to steric considerations. The formation of these products is important because it means this method can provide access to either one or two azotines, which has never previously been reported for a 2 plus 2 cycle addition method for these types of products. Also, the formation of these products was in line with our proposed 2 azotine intermediate for the formation of the rearranged 1 azotines. While these products are interesting on their own, we hypothesized that they could be used as intermediates to access other desirable compounds and envisioned that densely substituted THFs could be generated from the hydrolysis of the 1 azotine products. Through a brief optimization, we discovered that the desired hydrolysis could proceed in situ to generate a variety of densely substituted THF molecules. Interestingly, two of these compounds highlighted on the slide arose from one azotines that had never been isolated on their own, likely enabled by hydrolysis of the unstable azotine before decomposition, allowing formation of the THF product. Notice that these products have a desirable amino ester functionality and a high degree of substitution, which has been achieved in only one step from relatively simple starting materials. Lastly, we were really interested in exploring the mechanism of this rearrangement to form the one azotine products, as this had been unexpected and understanding new mechanisms arising from triplet energy transfer is important for this rapidly growing field. The first thing we wanted to explore was the first two plus two cycloaddition step, and to do this, we performed stern formula quenching studies. The result of this study showed that the alkyne substrates were capable of quenching the catalyst as well as the oxime substrate. And since we were able to rule out electron transfer through cyclic voltammetry, this indicates that either the triplet state alkyne or triplet state oxime could be participating as the excited state component to initiate the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. In order to test if the excited state of the alkyne could initiate this cycloaddition, control experiments were designed with oxymes that are known to not be reactive to analogous 2 plus 2 cycloadditions with alkenes. Reaction of diphenylacetylene with a reduced isoxazoline that does not undergo triplet energy transfer yielded no product, as did reaction with an acyclic oxime that preferentially isomerizes from its excited state over undergoing a 2 plus 2 reaction. If the alkyne component was actively initiating the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition step, we would have expected to see product formation in these experiments. So this indicates that as originally designed, the initial 2 plus 2 cycloaddition proceeds through the isoxazoline triplet excited state. Further mechanistic studies focused on determining the mechanism of the rearrangement and specifically whether the rearrangement occurred through a triplet stepwise or singlet concerted mechanism. Since no 2-azotene intermediate could be isolated from the reactions to form the 1-azotenes, a series of probes were designed to explore this step. First, an isoxazoline with a cyclopropyl ring in the backbone was subjected to the optimal conditions. If the reaction were proceeding through a stepwise triplet mechanism, this cyclopropyl ring would be able to open, forming the cyclohexane product shown, while if the rearrangement proceeded through a concerted mechanism, no ring opening should be observed. This experiment showed exclusive formation of the ring open product, which is in line with the triplet stepwise mechanism. Additionally, an activated 2-azotene was synthesized by independent synthesis in order to test the viability of this intermediate under both direct excitation and triplet energy transfer conditions. To test for the possibility of direct excitation, the diene was irradiated with light without any photocatalyst and showed no conversion. Then, when the diene was irradiated with the photocatalyst present, Complete consumption of the starting material was observed, with formation of the expected rearranged 1-azotene as the sole product. These observations are in line with the triplet stepwise mechanism, as no reactivity was observed under direct excitation conditions. Given these results, we propose the following mechanism. First, the isoxazoline is sensitized to its triplet state, which adds into the alkyne, forming a 1,4 biradical, which then undergoes intersystem crossing and subsequent recombination to form the initial 2-azotene product through a stepwise 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. For aliphatic alkynes, this is the final product, but for aryl or activated alkynes, this 2-azotene can be sensitized a second time to form a triplet biradical intermediate, which undergoes rearrangement 
an intersystem crossing, followed by radical recombination to form the final wad azotine product. That brings us to the end of this episode. In summary, this new visible light mediated 2 plus 2 reaction enables the synthesis of two azotines through direct 2 plus 2 cycloaddition, one azotine through cycloaddition and rearrangement, and THS through in situ hydrolysis. This is the first example of a visible light mediated method to access azotines through an imine alkyne type 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. Additionally, this method uses very modular and easily accessible starting materials and provides access to desirable, previously inaccessible products. I want to thank my lab, especially my PI, Professor Corinna Schindler, and my co-workers, Dr. Mark Becker and Dominique Blackman, along with the National Science Foundation for providing me with a pre-doctoral fellowship. I also want to thank Synthesis Workshop for inviting me to share my work, and thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Emily for a very interesting talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.